Fiji, untold. Welcome, my pretties, to a Halloween edition of Fiji Untold as we explore <laughs> the Fiji Museum. But before we get started, bring out your sasa and chase away those ghouls. Because if you are a fan of travel, history, and of course the supernatural, then guess what? Congratulations, you've come to the right place. We'll be uploading videos very regularly, so make sure you subscribe, follow us, and give us a big thumbs up so you don't miss out on any of the new videos that we post. It's really great that you join us today to go and explore the Fiji Museum and keep watching. I did a bit of a take at night time on the Noella Hostel or the former site of the Noella Hostel, which is actually one of the Fiji Museum buildings. Uh, I filmed this at night time and, you know, this building is rumoured to be haunted by the ghost of the matron. Now, the matron is meant to be a spirit that is very hospitable, very caring, and she loves to just oversee and make sure that everything is still um, being treated with respect for the building that she loved in life. Uh, as I mentioned, I was filming uh, this at night time. And whilst I was actually filming this, I did see something that gave me a bit of a scare. Now, just because it's Halloween, we're going to do things a little bit differently and start off by looking at this footage. Now, see if you can see what gave me a bit of a fright. At the back of the museum is actually the museum offices, as you can see here, sitting atop the hill. And these offices Prior to being government offices, it used to be a women's home. And so women and young girls that used to live in the surrounding areas that were unable to continue to stay at home or in their villages, they'd actually come and stay here at the women's home. The women's home was actually overseen by a lady which was known as the matron. And there are rumours that one of the residents of the women's homes had actually passed away and died within the building. Uh, to this day, People have seen the matron. Uh, she's usually seen in the upper windows and staring out of those windows. As people come to these offices and they see her up in the upper windows, as soon as she's spotted, she'll slowly disappear. I thought I actually just saw something on the building. That's why I stopped for a little while. However, uh, we'll continue. Um, so as I said, she's usually spotted in the actual upper windows and when she's spotted, she disappears. Um, she's also heard uh, orderly, so you'd hear her uh, walking through the offices with the clip-clop of her high heels. She's also heard inside the lab of the main section of the museum, um, the lab and also the collections room. And even in front of the main veranda, you've, we've heard stories about um, the sound of high heels coming out from the museum door on the left-hand side of the building and walking along the veranda to the front of the museum as well. Um, as I said, you can also smell her, so she, she has a perfume, and the perfume will usually be smelt before she's actually heard audibly um, as she approaches with her high heels. There was a lady that used to work here at the museum, and apparently she'd be found by the other staff and other people um, laughing and giggling and talking and there would be no one else around. Uh, one day there was a volunteer that came to help out at the museum and she was a psychic and she had the gift to be able to hear audibly into the spiritual realm. Um, so while she was in there working, she actually mentioned it, that she did not like working uh, in the museum and it, she couldn't wait to get out until about 4.30 when they knocked out. She'd be the one of the first to go because of the things that she could hear. And one of the things that she heard was actually um, the matron. And the matron would be speaking to that staff member. And the reason why she had claimed that the lady was laughing and giggling was because uh, the matron was telling her stuff about the other people that were actually working inside the museum itself. And that's why she was laughing, giggling, and, um, and having a good old chat to the matron that no one else could see. Well, I hope that wet your ghoulish appetites. Now let's have a look at the history of the Fiji Museum before we wrap it up with a look at some of the possessed items found within. The first Fiji Museum was established in 1904 at the Suva Town Hall, which is present-day Vineyard's Palace Restaurant, and it displayed the collection of Mr. William Allardyce, who was the former acting governor of Fiji. In 1919, unfortunately, there was a fire that went through Town Hall, and it destroyed part of the collection, so it was moved from place to place until it settled in 1930 on the upper floors of Carnegie Library in Suva.
When the war broke out, they wanted to protect the collection. So one of the places they actually hid the collections was underneath the British High Commissioner's residence on Thuckenbough Road in tunnels, which you can still see to this day. After the threat of war had passed, a new home for the Fiji Museum was commissioned and it officially opened its doors in 1955. So everybody, that is the history of the Fiji Museum in a snapshot. Let's have a look at the untold story of some of the items within. The oldest artifacts housed at the Fiji Museum date all the way back to 3,700 years ago. And many of these items were used during pre-Christian times for cultural and traditional ceremonies. An example of the artifacts that can be found at the museum include things like tools that were used for cannibalistic purposes, tanoas, which were used by the priests to liaise with ancestral deities, and even tambours. Tambours were one of the most sacred items and they're still used to this day. Even its name depicts how sacred it is. Tambu, which means tambu or forbidden or sacred, tambu a. Tambuas are till this day given in births, marriages, to farewell important visitors, installation of chiefs, contracts, and also at deaths. Given the nature of how these items have been used, some have actually rumored to be possessed and they've been known to move, shake, call the name of people as you pass by, and in worst case situations have even been associated with misfortune and death. One way the museum actually expands its collection is through safeguarding missions, where they go out to the communities to collect artifacts and conserve them for future generations. During one safeguarding mission, the museum learned of a trip to Thai level by church ministers, and they were going to this village because they wanted to help rid the villagers of possessed items that were being blamed for causing deaths in the villages. And so the staff of the museum made their way to this village to try and safeguard these items from being destroyed. Now, as the story goes, among these items being destroyed was a tambour. And this tambour, the villagers were claiming was causing deaths in the village. So to try and rid themselves from this misfortune, the villagers had actually put this tambour into a box. They put it into a box and put a Bible on top of it. And then they decided to try and purify it by fire, by throwing it into the fire to be destroyed. Now, this is where it gets a little sketchy because even though they put this box with the Bible into the fire, everything burnt. However, the one thing that came out unscathed, not even sign of any fire that had been damaging to it or anything at all, was the tambour. Now, let's just stop here and think about it. Why you would throw a Bible into the fire, even if you want to try and destroy something, is beyond me. However, that's not my place to say. And so the family who owned the tambour, not wanting it to be destroyed because obviously it's a family heirloom, asked a member of the museum staff who, to protect her identity, will call Lorraine, to take it to the museum to safeguard, whereby only he or an immediate member of his family were able to then pull it out and take it back when they wanted it. But unfortunately for Lorraine to take it to the museum, it was a little bit late because it had already closed for the evening. So she put this tomboy into a handbag and said to herself that the next morning, as soon as the museum opened, she'll take it when she gets to work and then go and register it. So Lorraine didn't think twice about it. The tambour was safe, she put it in a handbag, and she went home. Now, as you do, she fell asleep. However, in the middle of the night, she was startled and woke up, only to realize that she couldn't move. In Fiji, we call it, she was locked, or in English terms, she was experiencing sleep paralysis. However, one thing that immediately came to her attention was that she was not alone. She saw that there was two men in ancient attire that were standing in the room with her, one at her head and the other one at her feet. And what these men were trying to do was they were trying to lift her to be able to push her out of a window that was above her head. Now, she could not move, she was struggling, but what she did do was she was able to mutter the words, in Jesus' name, release me. As soon as she uttered those words, they immediately disappeared. So Lorraine got up, she got her Bibles, she put one at her head, one at her feet, and one at the window that they were trying to push her out of. And she slept the rest of the night calmly without incident. However, the next morning, she went straight to the museum as soon as she woke up, registered it, 
and rid herself of this tumbler. Unfortunately, that brings us to the end of our Halloween edition of Fiji Untold, the Fiji Museum. There's so much to talk about with the Fiji Museum, so this is only part one. Make sure you tune in for part two, which is being released shortly. Venaka, and see you next time.